Hey guys, it's me and I'm back again with another review, this time of Child's Play 3, a horror mystery thriller from 1991. Well, that's what the genre says it is. So, everybody knows what it's about, but let's get on with it. The director is Jack Bender, and writers are Don Manichi, again, fantastic. He's lost his way. And this time playing Andy Barkley, we've got Justin Whalen. It was in the, what was it, uh, Lois and Clark, Adventures of Superman and Dungeons and Dragons. Perry Reeves, Jeremy Seavers, Travis Fine, Dean Jacobson, Brad Dourif, Peter Haskell. And then you've got, where is he? Andrew Robinson, who everybody knows was in Hellraiser as Larry. I liked him that. All I kept thinking when I saw him in this was, it's Larry, but as a army haircut, you know? Mm, mm, mm. And all we kept going is, your hair's disgusting, private. And I'm thinking, wow, this guy's passionate about his job. Just was like, what? Anyway. So basically, the movie starts out, and it's eight years later, after and he's a little boy now he's a teenager and he's played by justin whaling basically so basically they're clearing up the they've decided okay so the company's decided they're going to make the good guy dolls again because they were out beating every other product by two to one so they're going to redo it so they're clearing up the warehouse and somehow chuck when they're clearing up the mess of chucky his blood drips into a thing and makes another one of them basically and you're sitting there going after eight years and you keep thinking, if he's supposed to become more and more human, will he be dead by now? So, it's, you know, I mean, from being killed. Because he sure the hell can feel it. So he comes back, he goes, he basically torments the CEO or the owner of the company and basically strangles him to death. And so he's saying, like, oh, there's ne you never can get, it's about a good strangulation helps the circulation. And I'm laughing at that. And then he looks on the computer and he finds out Andy is in Kent Military School. And you're sitting there going, Military School? Yeah. And then you think to yourself, here we go again with another awful plot in a horror movie, which is going to have terrible characters. Trust me, there's a horrible character in this called Tyler. The most annoying, most frustrating character in this movie. So anyway, he's there and he gets attacked by the boys there and they basically show him their dominance and stuff. And he's sharing his room with White House. Is it White House? Sorry, White House, not White House. His name might as well have been White House. Because he does nothing other than gets bullied. So you're going through the thing and little Tyler goes to see if his dad sent him a package or something. And he dance, but the general says, the colonel, sorry, I think it's the colonel, says, Oh, Tyler, go and give this to Andy. It's a big package. So as he's going through, he keeps dropping it. It gets kicked about and everything. What well, would have been great is if you had heard Chucky swearing as it happened, but no. So he, he somehow drops it downstairs and it rips, and he realizes it's, it's a good guy doll. So instead of getting to Andy, he runs in the armory and he opens it and Chucky jumps out and starts having a go at him, basically. And saying things like this. You! You're not Andy! And he goes, I thought you could only say three words. I'm so cool. And he goes, yeah, let's play, let's play hide the soul. And they get basically interrupted. And then you get Andy seeing the good guy doll getting pulled along and then pills start getting killed. And there's a bit near the end where they're doing this paintball thing, like army paintball. And Chucky has actually filled up one set of the guns with real bullets. So they're shooting, but they can't tell, obviously. They're shooting real bullets, but they can't tell because, you know, paintball bullets and real bullets sound completely different, don't they? But they sound the same in this movie, apparently, according to them. So when someone goes... When you go, go, bang, that's the same as a paintball going, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. 
So I'm sitting there going, hmm, yeah. So someone gets shot in the chest. The person who should have got shot in the chest, to be honest, because he was a real a-hole. And you've got, you've got Chucky wanting Tyler constantly. Give over Tyler. Give over Tyler, otherwise I'm going to blow you all sky high. So they're all shooting, they're all standing around, and he throws the grenade, and they're all arguing, and White House is like, no, and he goes, and he jumps right on the grenade and blows himself up, practically. And you're sitting there going, okay, why would he do that? Who in their right mind would jump on top of a grenade? Yep, I know Cap I know uh, Steve Rogers does it in Captain America before he becomes, you know, Cap. But that's a, that's a comic book character. It's not a real character. So I'm just sitting there going, bloody hell. So he kills himself. And then there's this big, massive confrontation at the carnival ride. And Chucky gets half his face cut off. And there's this big thing where he falls into a fan and gets cut to shreds. And you're just sitting there going, this finale's all right. The finale, to be honest, is a lot better than the film. Because one of the biggest problems with this film is it focuses too much on unimportant characters. Brad Dourif is really the main character, as well as Andy, in these movies. And you need to see more Chucky. And sadly, you don't see a lot of Charles Lee Ray as Chucky. You just see either him as the doll being pulled along, or you just see him sitting still while people are walking by him and stuff and turning out in different areas and people going, what's he doing there? And other than that, it's kind of boring to a degree. I mean, the deaths are very predictable. They're, they're not nothing special. And I know it was made in 1991. But I mean, strangling a guy and then slitting one guy's throat is just like really same. And one bloke dies of a heart attack. And the colonel sees him talking to him. And he has a heart attack right there in front of him. And you're like, what? What? You're supposed to, you know, and I just, it just irritated me. So, the movie's not awful. It is fun to a degree. But it's one of those things where you kind of miss the old, younger version of Andy. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate that they had to move the story along and go eight years later. But they could have done a lot better than a military school. Because when you were to, when they're doing the, uh, exercises and you see all this military stuff going on in the school it's just boring the Tyler kid can't act and he just bored me witless and whenever he was on screen I was like please die please die please just die and please disappear from existence because I can't stand this kid and it just annoyed me he kept getting away and Chucky kept going after him and I was like, so technically, Andy wasn't really the person he was going after in this movie. It was Tyler. So what's the, you know, what was the point of the story? So this technically was the last of the Charles Play movies. Because after this, he went on to like buy the Chucky, see the Chucky, and Chucky, you know, the curse of Chucky. So it didn't really, it doesn't really stay the same. Yeah, so it doesn't really stay the same kind of series, but I kind of take the first three as the original three that I took together, and the next three kind of like following on in a different way. So, yeah, the film, I'd give it a 2 out of 2.5, because as, as well as it is kind of directed, it doesn't have any scare to it. It doesn't have any real importance. It just feels like one of those movies that they cram out to get money. A lot like films like Hellraiser, where some of them were good, and then they just were, like, really bad and boring, and you just were sitting there going, why did it have to be here? Like, for instance, Bloodlines. Why did it have to be in the past and the present? Why did it have to be in space? Like this. Why did it have to be in a military school? You know, I, you know, I just I just got bored of it. It just bored me senseless. I'm sitting there going, when's something going to happen? Now, when the murders did happen, there was one good bit with a trash compactor where the bloke basically gets killed and he hears the voice going, help me, help me, I'm inside inside the back of the, you know, rubbish truck. And he climbs in and then Chuck is in the front going, ha, and shutting it on him and killing him. And that was pretty good, but you didn't really see the death. So, you know, Brad Dourif is excellent in this movie. I mean, he's good when he's got the chance to shine. And he is a horror icon, just like the rest of them, really. But it's like it was thrown into a movie which was just going to bore everybody silly. 
Now, 1901, it probably was a lot better to people than it is now. But it just it just has so much missing for it. It's any, it has heart missing. It has a good soundtrack missing. The other two movies had great soundtracks. This one's got a not really that good one. I never felt any tension. I never felt anything going on. I just felt like I was watching a daytime soap opera. That's what it felt like. Where a boy was sent to the military school and his, and his boyfriend, known as Chucky the Doll, was just trying to catch up with him while also trying to get a bit of a other kid to be inside. And you're like, ugh. You know, so I didn't like it. So it's a 2.5 out of 5. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And again, if you haven't, Please check out my holding up video, which is the video before this video, which is my last video. And let me know what you think. If you like the video, if you like this video, give me a give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, I'd appreciate it, guys. So thanks for watching. And as always, take care and have a lovely, lovely day.